Okay, time to focus on this round though. And that's an easy mulligan. And I think this has to be like barely a keep, but a pretty awful one. Need a second land pretty quickly, and then this engine can help me fix the mulligan a little bit. Please just let this be like tireless tribe one time and not diver because I mean usually I'm happy with the diver matchup as well because but my current hand is a lot better set up to deal with tribe assuming I do find the white stars That's a long period in, wow. Or is it just the let's turn on the stream and check what Pascal is playing period in? Top top on their period in, okay. Well, my hand isn't too exciting, they're not seeing much. Blue black, okay. That makes my hand significantly worse. Would have been better against both tribe and Delver. Okay, well at least this prison resolves my mana issues are gone for a while. And then Faith of Zooting can help me get rid of the prismatic strands and the journey. Though journey can be okay against Angler of course. Yeah, I think Spire Golem is better. Yeah. Okay, they have a pretty slow mana developing draw that allows me to build some advantage on the board for now. It's pretty useful. My draw still has many of the cards that I don't want to draw in this matchup, but at least I drew out of my mana issues and I gained a card. This is obviously the worst Bounce dude because it dies to disfigure while Skyfisher dodges disfigure. Yeah, exactly. And now they have counter magic open for the Skyfisher. Just pretty uncomfortable. Though forcing them to counter something. It's not that bad. I think I'll just better screech because it's more mana efficient for me to get the more expensive card out of my hand. Unless they have Echoing Decay, they should have trouble answering this one for one. And yeah, if they want to alchemy into Angler, then I can go for a turn where I go Journey your Angler plus Skyfisher, and that is. A pretty good board development for me. Diabolic Edict, Forbidden Alchemy with different artworks. Disfigure, sure. So I think I'm like one looting away from greatness at this end. Just have to get rid of the prismatic strands. Probe, okay. Well, that's a way to get rid of the prismatic strands, but not that great for me that it happened. Hmm, it's kind of close between these two. This like draws a random card, but it's super super inefficient. And the blast can actually give me some closing potential. Now that I'm really beating them down for their inefficiency here, I can make like a bunch of birds and then uh, have prismatic stance protection open so that they can't even crush justice me. So my opponent really needs to come up with an echoing decay, which they usually have somewhere between zero and two copies of mm, that's also pretty great 
I mean, I guess the graveyard doesn't have a lot of stuff yet that I... Wait, I need to make sure, okay. I accidentally flashed back prismatic strands before when I had two different spells in the graveyard that had flashed back. So don't want to, like, give protection from anything this turn. I guess there are two Forbidden Alchemies, actually, that's super great. I was gonna say, like, I don't care about the Chainer's Edict that much, but getting two Alchemies and making their Angler follow up awkward is actually pretty great. They have seven cards in hand, but if none of them are Echoing Decay, then I should be in a great spot. If Incrust Justice, they need an untapped blue source support to... Oh my fucking god. I mean, I can still follow up with more better screech, but that's pretty disgusting. Mm. Oh, come on. Why, opponent? Also, I feel like I've never drawn a Pella Sentence today, what the hell? Like, it's supposed to be Red White Monarch. Where are my Pella Sentinels? Sure, in the Delver matchups, I often boarded them out because they're not that great, but even in the control matchup, where it's like the most crucial card that you can draw. Against Tron, I somehow fought my way through all of it without being a Monarch for most of the time, and here they're also not showing up. What the hell? Can't win with Red White Monarch when you're not the Monarch. Yeah. Change the egg. That version is just super greedy. And Haven't been this tilted over a, a popper tournament in a while. Wow. It's not good. Not good. Yeah. And dead. Okay, focus, sideboarding, now I get to bring in all the awesome cards, maybe my Pellicent must show up sometime, and journeys, I think I want to keep my journeys, just board, board all, all these boards. Then I guess one card is difficult to still cut. Because like, having some number of journeys for Grammar Angler is nice, but you don't really want to be flooded on them either. Kind of tempting to cut a land, but you also really want to hit like Palace in this manner with Pyroblast backup. So cutting the land is a little bit troublesome. Yeah, I think I just need to cut one journey and hope I find the one journey whenever it becomes relevant, or just like use Galvanic Blast to shoot down the Angler. Yeah, I think all the other cards that have in the deck now are important. Like you can go even further down on Galvanic Blast, but that seems a little bit sketchy as well. And even though they did show me Echoing Decay, I think I want these in the deck still. My opponent only also showed me like three copies of Chainer's Edict and the Diabolic Edict, so a ton of cards that get destroyed by me making tokens, and probably just like two Echoing Decays or something that they won't necessarily have every time. Also, I can 
Galvanic Blast down my own token and counter the Echoing Decay by making it fizzle, and then I get to hold on to three of the birds. Yeah. I mean, that would have been pr uh, possible if my opponent let me untap with the birds once. I think I still had to make them on the turn that I did, because it was more likely that it resolves there, and my opponent doesn't have a ton of Echoing Decay in their deck. I was still protected against the Vingrush Justice, so I think it was just correct to do that, but the fact that my opponent found Echoing Decay as their only possible answer was pretty terrible for me. The game 1 matchup is just not that great though. Basically it comes down to you having Palace Sentinels on curve, which just didn't show up. Uh, easy keep. even have the one journey after boarding the other journey out so either this is going to be amazing because I have the guaranteed answer for when the Gamma Angler comes down or it's going to run into my in my hand when the game isn't about Gamma Angler and they go for like an auger into a Drifter curve and answer all my threats but yeah at least I have access to it and if it really does turn into a game where I don't want journey then I can still get rid of it later I think I'm greedily holding on to this Budruka buff for a while. Though it kind of makes my, the rest of my sequencing not ideal. But just at least getting like one Forbidden Alchemy worth of value and then maybe the other flashback cards that they dump into the graveyard is already pretty nice. <laughs> not the Radiant Fountain. No. I still think I'm jamming this into Counterspell for soul manipulation. They don't currently have a creature target in the graveyard, of course. Yeah, if it resolves, it's pretty great for me. Hmm. Probably still can't afford to hold on to this. If I really need the effect, I can bounce it with Skyfisher or Garrison. Because I need to be able to go like Prophetic Prism into Skyfisher number two, something similar to keep applying pressure. But yeah, if there's something great in the graveyard, I could go Skyfisher Bounce Bok, replay it. But even the Alchemy flashback is like pretty far away when I'm currently in a pretty beatdown oriented position. Applying pressure to my opponent, they need to come up with answers, counterspell, counterspell, yeah, they seem to agree. They had these reactive cards and decided they need to start casting removal first and fight for the ward. Yeah, sure. You got me with the duress. It's good against reaping the graves, but I think the rest out of my opponent's deck is actually not that great in the matchup. It can get my only journey here, but even then, I'm not that afraid yet. I'm still flying over and being the beat down. If they like play Gramic Angler here and I go Prophetic Prism into Sky for attack for four, threatening to attack for six, I don't think the Gramic Angler is that big of a deal. My opponent seems to disagree. And they do have the Radiant Fountain to raise. The Radiant Fountain. Uh, I guess I can Alchemy at this point, because I have enough garbage that I want to get rid of. Still haven't seen a Palace Sentinel, so that's unfortunate though. Or a Pyro Blast. Cause that allows my opponent to just Mold Drifter next turn and resolve it. I do have a ton of closing power here with Double Gavanic Blast. So if these flyers stay uncontested, it could be good for me. 
And we already saw how much trouble the blue black removal suite has with dealing with core sky fractures. They need to come up with a bunch of doom blades to get this board under control. But yeah, the way that my opponent played would have been really easy for me to just win with the palace sentinels. But I think racing against the Garmak Inglers are right with me. My opponent saw one of the Gavanic Blasts of the, the rest, right? Yeah, I think so. I had like Prophetic Prism, Gavanic Blast, Looting and Journey in the hand then, and then found a second Gavanic Blast here. Uh, More Drifter is unfortunate though. You really want to be Pyroblasting these, which is why I play 4 Pyroblast. My deck seems to disagree. PJ Salt. Oh, that's not a bad one. My opponent likely just trades off the Glintok here. And I'll continue racing against the Angler. Still a three turn clock from the Angler because I gained some life as well. And also, like, they have a three turn clock, I have like a two turn clock here, depending on how many of these they can counter. Can't really disrupt my ability to have Metacraft. And they can, like, recall one of these lands, but I do have, like, more Metacraft and Ambrose here. So these Galenic Blasts are going to be threatening to my opponent, though they do have seven, uh, like, eight cards in hand, so. I assume they can come up with some answers eventually. Who knows, could be sitting on like a bunch of soul manipulations and probes and like Evinkar's justices and trainers. Oh god, no. Well, that's an issue. Racing is no longer really in my favor. I can double give any this down. But wait, what? How was that? Wasn't that just worse than killing the Glintog? They killed a 1-2 instead of a 2-2 with the Echoing Decay. And they also could have done it on my turn so this doesn't attack for 2. That just made no sense whatsoever what my opponent just did there. I mean the cartouche part of it made sense but the Echoing Decay targeting was completely terrible. Yeah, I guess... Gotta do what you gotta do, right? Then probably just plane, so I have Pyroblast open for more Drifter, and then get rid of some of these lands with looting. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's possible they have second echoing. Still think the extra damage that you're taking. Uh, I don't know. You could. No, maybe. Maybe it's true that they want double Glint talk out of their second echoing. Just seemed very unintuitive and weird. Well, this is why I wanted Pyroblast open, though it looks like my opponent has counter spell back up now. No, nice. Like to see that. Doomblade? Or Trainer's Edict, I guess. Or Angler. Yeah, this looks like Angler. Well, unfortunate that this Bojuka bug timing was weird, but I did need to did need to pyroblast that more drifter, so that still worked out a lot better for me than it otherwise would have. <laughs> God damn it! Where are the Pelicentness? I'm through half my library. Also out of lootings, right? Yeah. 
Cut them. Plus getting wrecked every game by flooding out even though I have better flood out protection than any of the other borrow stacks have. Oh my f god. I think I'm out of answers for that actually. I mean I have one more Gavanic Bass. I have to block and then Gavanic Bass it down. This is just terrible. Unreal. I think I'll bounce this one and then replay it. So just so I remove the counter and then I have some triple block that looks favorable and if they blow up the triple block I have Gavanic Blast. Though I assume they still have the second Echoing Decay there for the triple block. That was our assumption previously. really don't want to cycle this yet because one of the ways that I win this game is to find my prismatic strands and uh, not pris my reaping the graves I mean and if I wipe out my own graveyard then I no longer have that alchemy uh, I mean letting them flash it back is also pretty awful for me but I think I need the Gavinic Blast three lands okay that could be anything could be anything Probably should tap this. I think the difference of one mana on their angler isn't really what's going to change anything here, because I can't really beat the third angler anyways. So Oh, they're going him with their alchemies. Or Stormbound Geist. Yeah, their sideboard plan is pretty creature heavy. Okay, more auguring. Sure, sure. Miss? Nice. I think even though this Echoing Decay is going to destroy me, I'm kind of priced into doing this. So that my opponent has to respond. If they don't respond, I get the trade. If they do respond, I have Gavanic Blast. I'm getting wrecked by Disfigure plus Dispel, but yeah, I think this is fine for me, rather than trade this in. Obviously, it's much better for me to keep my board, but then I'm just losing to a Counterspell too hard if I go for like a Glintalk single block and then Counterspell. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. Okay, I guess if they have no removal for my Glintalk, I'm still in a fine spot. I can try to sack this to find another creature to play. Or I can hope to find my reaping. Uh, Palisandness would be amazing here. That's four draws. I don't have any good answers for Angler. Zero draws for that. Uh, Skyfisher training would be great, but I only have one left in my deck. If I draw reaping off of the relic, it's super bad. If I draw reaping naturally, it's great. Alchemist Vial is still pretty good here. Thraben Inspector is very good here. Yeah, I think I have to sack it, though I don't like that all too much. No, <laughs> what the hell? Okay, now I just have to hope they make the angular attack that makes me jump block and then don't 
have a way of killing it beforehand and also don't have a way of countering my Gavinic Blast. And I guess countering back is pretty easy for me. That's not the issue. Can Robohar or Moldrift or something be in Crash Justice? Oh, that's actually pretty nice for... No, I mean, it's nice for me this turn, but it's going to kill me next turn, so pretty much lost to this. Oh my fucking god, this match has been such a joke. Oh my god, yeah, red-white beatdown is just not a good deck. Red-white monarch is a pretty great deck. Um, maybe I needed to pyroblast this because my only chance of stabilizing is like another windscard crack, but even then they just cast a Vincar's Justice twice and I'm out of outs. Yeah, god damn it. What the hell? That was incredibly frustrating. I might even lose top 32 on this. Yeah, it's possible. Depends on how my tiebreakers shake out.